We're in the book of John's Gospel. But before we go there, um, we want to paint a picture of the situation in which Jesus gets and meets with the other disciples after his resurrection. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and we magnify your name. Your word, Lord, praise and adoration and all thanksgiving. We say hallelujah mm -hmm. to the one that got up out of the grave on the third day and he declared all power is in my hands. And we, we thank you, Father, for that yes, yes, yes. declaration. Yes, thank you. you said that all power in, in your hands. Heaven and earth is under your Yes, Lord. Sovereignty. We thank you, Father. We praise yes. you. Forgive us all of our many sins and clear yes. our minds, Jesus. Yes, Especially my mind, that I may be able to speak those things that the Spirit shared with us through the Spirit. We love you, Jesus. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And for his sake, amen. amen. My topic is uh, Love Can Fix Bridges. We've been talking about relationships here lately. Right, for the last several weeks and uh, we're going to see here where the love of Christ fix any bridge any bridge let's go back to where Jesus reveals to Peter Peter says it's God revealed he said but I, I won't in Matthew chapter 16 verses 13 through 19, you can turn there if you, if you desire, but God reveals his, his son. He said to them, you are Christ, the son of the living God. You know, in, when he went to Caiaphas in the mountain there and he had got them away from Jerusalem, he asked them, who did, who did, who did men say that the son that I am? Mm -hmm. And he said, and Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. You gotta you got, you got say something else here. Peter said that. And Jesus said, Flesh and blood have not revealed that unto you. But my Father, which is in heaven that places the emphasis on on the Father revealing to anybody who the Son is. Well, 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 well. You don't get to know the Son by knowing a passage of scripture or reading a poem or you were singing in a choir, you were preaching. You get to know God, know the Son of God called to Christ for God has revealed him unto you. Yes, thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. There's no cheap way of knowing Christ. Thank you Lord. God has only one way of you knowing who Christ is. He reveals to you exactly who he is. I, I should thank God for that. All these false prophets and men going around do that. I, don't matter me. I know that I know Jesus because God revealed him to me. He revealed him to you. Nobody can tell me who Jesus is because I already know who he is. He the son of God. But listen to this now. He prophesies to Peter, you're going to betray me. Mm -hmm. mm. Even after the revelation of who Jesus is, Come on, uh, Peter said, I mean, God, Jesus yes. said, you're going to betray me. I, 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 I'll go with you, yes. Jesus, all the way. Yes. I go, even to death, yes. I'll go with you. Yes. Stay, 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 stay. Amen. Yes, sir. Praise God. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you and to shift you like we. Yes, sir. So that shares with me this, and I hope that we can pick up on it, that even though you may know Jesus, even though you may have seen him, even though you know he, know he is the Son of God, there are times that you may betray him. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, 
Yeah. Let that sink in. Lord, forgive us. Let that sink in. It's, it's so wonderful that God is so kind. Yes. It's so yes. merciful. Yes. And Paul said, hey, Grace is yes. sufficient. Yes, yes, Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Say that desire mm -hmm. that it may sift you like wheat. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's his job. Yes, sir. Sifting. Mm -hmm. And not only does he sift Peter, he sifts everybody. Yes, sir. Yes. And God gives him permission to sift us mm -hmm. at particular times. Mm -hmm. All right now. God, Satan can't sift you at his own, own will. <clears throat> you have to get permission from God to sift you. Mm -hmm. Job was a perfect example, right? Yes, yes. I said, I want him, I want him walking up to and fro down the earth here. I want to handle him. I want to kill him. Mm -hmm. But you done built this hedge around him. Yeah. I can't touch him. And then God gave him permission to do certain things, take certain things, and do certain things to Job, his family, his wealth, his materialistic realm. And then finally one day Job said, I, I heard you with my ear. Now I see you with my eye. I know who you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Jesus said, I prayed. For thee that thy faith fail not. Yes. Wow. But thou are converted. When thou art converted, strengthen the brothers. Yes. Now some things went on here. Mm -hmm. He saw Jesus. Yes, sir. But he wasn't what? Converted. Converted. Here is a river going like this and that river for some apparent reason has not gone the same way but has been converted to go another way mm -hmm. even traffic sometimes you see the uh, things that do make you turn one way you can't go that way we Detour. were that yesterday Detour. down at Reverend King Reverend the temple's house and we wanted to go to his house mm -hmm. but the house the, the, the road was blocked off. Mm. So we called him and he told us how to go around that block to get to his house. And so there was a conversion, a conversion route mm. to where he was. And this is what he, I think about Jesus said, once you convert it, you're still Peter now, even though you see me, mm -hmm. once you convert it, well. then you'll be able to strengthen the brothers. Just because a person knows Jesus doesn't mean he's been converted. Mm -hmm. You could be born again and not converted. Because mm -hmm. you're not doing what Jesus asked you to do. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You're not doing those things he requires you to do with his other. Love one another. Mm -hmm. Pray for one another. Yep. Mm -hmm. Forgive one another. Yep. Show mercy and compassion mm -hmm. to one another. And that's conversion. You can see Jesus but not have anything to do with his eternal purpose in your life. It's kind of strange, but that's the way it is here. But we're going to see where the love fix all those broken bridges. Thank you, Lord. Because Peter had actually destroyed the bridge between him and Jesus physically, mentally, out of his realm. Out of the, 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 the man realm, the human realm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You gotta understand that. You can never keep a relationship with Jesus in the human sense. Mm -hmm. Because God is a spirit. Right. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. you can know him but not worship him. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. You told Nicodemus, uh, you gotta be born again. And you, then you begin to see the kingdom of God. Man, look, look, look here. He said that, and he said to him, I'm ready to go with thee into prison and Mercy. even to death here. This is what Peter is saying with, to Jesus. And, said, and he said, I tell you, Peter, the, cro the cock shall crow, shall not crow this day before thou shalt deny me thrice that thou even know me. Mm. 
all that jaw jacket. And there come a time, we said all these things, there comes a time when you have to give a testimony of who you belong to. Yeah, it oh, is. That's true, man. That's true. There it is. Are you going to deny him? There it is. Well. In the smallest little little, little detail. Sometimes we have ways of manage to duck around those small details. All right, Bob, fix it up. You listen to what the Holy Spirit is sharing with us. He's not pointing out, he's not picking, he's trying to help us see. Because the Spirit was given to us to monitor us in our daily walk and our daily behavior. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yes. Jesus said um, the Holy Spirit would come, he would do what? Lead yeah. and guide. Yeah. So leading and guiding, there's a lot of details and things that he points out to us that you, you're probably going in the wrong direction. Yeah, huh? yeah. Get yourself together here, yeah, son. Yeah. You, do you love Jesus? Yeah, I love Jesus. Well, get back on track then. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Am I right? Mm -hmm. just, just also he says, uh, and Jesus said, that for the crop, he said, now, just in Matthew chapter 26, now Peter, I'm going along here. Now Peter said, without in a place, and the damsel came and said, uh, I also, you were with Jesus. Mm. Mm. This is a trial now. We got there to trial. We're looking at these scriptures. Where at uh, Pontius Pilate is, is con considering uh, the fate of Jesus. The false witness has already said what they said, and Peter is there. And Peter, the damsel said unto him, aren't you, aren't you, don't you know him? <laughs> yep. Yeah, somebody sees. <laughs> see, somebody gonna always be in a situation. They might, they might not ask you verbally, mm -hmm. but the situation will occur where you either say, "I know Jesus," or you don't know Jesus. Mm -hmm. So everything has doesn't have to be verbal. Your body action, yeah. your eye action, your motives, your intentions, the way you look, the way you act, person. All those things are sure little small detail of who you're loyal to. Now, who you know. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But he, he denied them all saying, I, 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 don't, I don't know him. Mm -hmm. And he was going out on the porch, Peter did. And a maid, another maid saw him and said unto him, oh, you, Were you there? Mm -hmm. I, and he said, this fellow also was with, with Jesus in Nazareth. I seen him. From the Peter, I seen him. He was, he was there with him. And the, the, the situation here is Jesus is going to be put to death. Peter knows that. Do you want to share in his death. Do you want to be put to death with him? You see where, where it's for leading us, Jack? Do you want to die with him? Are you willing to own up to Jesus? And own up to Jesus means that every day you have to pick up your cross and follow him. This is what we're talking about here. And that was the second time. And Peter said, no, I don't know him. And the third time, uh, this person said, I know him. He sweared with an oath. And if you know what swearing is all about, you can just imagine some of the things he said because he didn't want nothing to do with Jesus at that time. As long as things are going good, we're pretty good shape with Jesus. Uh -oh. oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good to me. Yeah. He brought me to a mighty long way. Yeah. Yeah. Let a little, 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 little death come in. Yeah. Where the flesh needs to be died, needs to be killed. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You see what I'm saying? It, it means a lot. To see. I, I've been asking God to give me the deep things that I can see and hopefully we can share with you 
that those areas that he wants you to see. And if you deny him, well, there's a remedy for that. We'll uh, see that later. Yeah. We'll yeah. see that. God just doesn't abandon you, abandon you because you abandon him. Because you understand the weakness of the flesh. He was tempted always as we are, yet without sin. God knows you. God understands you. Yeah, he identifies. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for that. And uh, after a while, came and stood by and said, Peter, surely you are, your speech kind of a trace that you, you've been with. See, if you hang around Jesus or hang around a person long enough, you, you begin to talk lack him. Mm -hmm. I ain't saying you, 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 you're lacking, but you're beginning to pick up little things that have yeah. been said. Yeah. If you run with a group, mm -hmm. in order to maintain your fellowship with that group, well, your speech changes. Yes. Action. Your action changes. Yeah. Your motives change. Yes. And he said, well, you, I, 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 your speech kind of betrayed you here. I think you've been with this Nazarene. He denied it. Then he began to curse, verse 20, verse 74, he, he, he began to curse and swear. I don't know him. And immediately the crop crowed three times. Because Jesus had prophesied that. Now, Let's go and look at how this is. This is just that the touch of so much here. He says, uh, "Let us go to the Gospel of John and see after the resurrection, chapter twenty-one, verse twelve. We read this morning. Let's see how Jesus handled those that denied him." And we don't want to duck anything here. If the double-edged sword is coming, we pray that it cuts every one of us. Amen. So that so that we can be a better servant of Christ. A rep, better representative of Christ. We're not ashamed of Christ. Uh, he's the only one that I know that's worthy of my death. And he loves me. That's another thing, too. Now he says here. Jesus, and Jesus, after the resurrection, verse 12, Jesus said unto, unto them, Come and die. They are out here fishing. He walks up. And what he does? He doesn't get on them. He doesn't chew them out. Mm -mm. No. Right? No. Why? Because he understands. Is you don't chew out another Christian or another fellow, especially a young one, chew him out because he did something wrong. Uh, I'm thinking that you once was seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen years old. And don't forget that you were just as unruly as that one you are swearing and cussing against well, and pointing your finger at right now. You weren't in much, your problem was worse off because you could see so much of it in another person. It means a lot. And this is what Jesus is dealing with here. He's dealing with the humanity of Peter and the other disciples. And all to deal with that, he has to have a heart of mercy, compassion, and grace, and forgiveness on his part. Jesus has to be a forgiven person. If you're going to live for Christ in any form of respect, you have to have a what? A forgiven heart. A forgiven mind. In order that Christ can work through you 
to reach another person, you have to have a forgiving heart. Yeah. And remember, if you're over 35 or 40, you probably already been there. Mm -hmm. If you're still there, you, you, you need help. And Jesus is the one to help us. Amen. He says, uh, Jesus said to them, come and dine. Let's, let's, let's go eat. Mm -hmm. And none of the disciples uh, said, who are thou? Because they already knew who he was. Now, going to dine, we were down to uh, uh, Pastor Temple's house yesterday. It was his daughter's birthday. And uh, it, I was totally surprised because uh, it was a total surprise because we, we had no idea that she was even home. So Claudette uh, got a card and we went down there. Got down there and uh, the fellowship was just beautiful. Uh, we dined sufficiently, did we Claudette? <laughs> and I had a chance to play some spades. What spades? What spades? I don't know what they were. Okay, right. we play some spades. <laughs> and what I'm saying is <laughs> the fellowship the fellowship was beautiful. Therefore, we had a chance to really say some things that we couldn't say if the fellowship had not occurred. In order to, to sometimes to, to do fellowship or do or any kind of fellowship, it's always good to come together around something like food or dog, something of that nature. Have a dinner, invite people over. Have a dinner at your home home. Have your grandchildren and children around. And just the fellowship. Mm -hmm. You don't have anything on your mind to just the fellowship. Mm -hmm. Why are you sitting there? Christ has, the, you've given Christ the ability to speak through you. Mm -hmm. Concerning that matter. The matter is not your primary point. The matter is fellowship. And God will enable you to put forth the primary point. If we just mean for you to fuss at me, I don't need to meet with you. If <laughs> mean just tell me I'm dead wrong, I don't need to meet. Let's meet here and God will provide an atmosphere where you can bring up things. Or even sometimes, don't bring it up at all. The fellowship is more important than the, than the particular principle that you, 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 you want to speak about. That's why Jesus said, um, Jesus come to them and take a bread and give it them and uh, fish likewise. Eh? Be here. Here is Jesus. And those disciples, they were they were around the, the parliament, they were crucified, and I think Peter cut off one of the, the servants' ear. And so he was adamant about his relationship with Christ. But when it came down, to really the road meet the road I don't know gracious mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. don't ask me that no more I don't know in fact I, I'm going to ease my way out of this mess <laughs> and why are you easing your way out there's always somewhere you, what, where you go to church yep. something occurs where it is Christ is the center of of what needs to be said or done. Remember that God is what? Sovereign. He's in charge of every situation. A fly um, um, doesn't crawl without his permission. If something comes into your life, it's because God has allowed it to come in your life. And you allow Christ to work with it, or are you going to work with it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gracious. Or are you going to be led by the Spirit, or led by your own imagination, or your mm -hmm. own conscience, or your own unforgiving heart? Mm -hmm. if that's the case, then you're in desperate need of bridge fixing. Mm -hmm. So many bridges are broken. Yes. Yep. And then to. Um, Danger of, of collapsing because of of the uh, lack of fellowship. The lack of fellowship. Not, don't spend time with each other. Mm -hmm. The only time, or sometimes, 
you spend with us on this thing here? And I, I'll say it again. You spend too much time on this thing. You can't hear. And every decision you made is based on what you receive from this, this communication here. You can't love, you can't forgive, because this is running your life, is actually taking over your mind and your thought patterns. Don't think that Satan is, uh, is uh, didn't create this type of atmosphere. I think that was a book of, um, was it Genesis, where they built this tower, this tower, and the Tower of Babel. We have a tower of, uh, Babel too. Everybody can understand everybody else. The language barriers are, are taken down. I can't speak Spanish, but I can go on my app and it will read me Spanish. So the communication uh, to everybody is the same. The God of this age has blinded the minds of those that believe not. This is the third time that Jesus uh, showed himself to his disciples after he had risen from what? The dead. You have a man before you that had seen death and had conquered death, hell, and the grave. So they dying, verse 20, 15, Jesus said unto Peter, son of Jonah, Thou love me more than these. See, we're sitting there eating, and everybody comfortable. The, the, the edge have been taken off. The, 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 the tremendous uh, um, element of uh, unfamiliarity has been dealt with. I'm sitting with Jesus. He's sitting with us, and so I, I, I think He's going to chew me out because I deserve Him because I've followed Him in the palace hall. I, I don't know what Christ. He, he's there. But we eat it. We don't know how long this lasted. Maybe it lasted 20 minutes, an hour. Don't know how long it lasted. But the element was they gathered to sup, to eat. And that's something that we don't see these days, that the family coming together for food, eat. My, my dad and my mom, thank God for them, um, we, we had breakfast. We had dinner. Those two meals we ate together. My dad sat at the head of the table, my mom next to him, and then the rest of us. And nobody touched anything until dad said so. That is something that's missing. The head of the house, the head of the family. You see what I'm saying? So Jesus was the head of this, this, this dinner here. All eyes was on him, right? Yeah. So when you when you focus on him, and Jesus understands your your nature, he understands your pitfalls, he understands your where's and wins and where's and wants and don'ts, and he understands everything about you. So when you come to dine with him, he's going to make sure that he says nothing to hurt you, but also but to but to build you up. Because he understands you. Yes, Lord. Yes. So many times we come and meet with people. We don't. We don't try to understand at all. All we want to do is get our point over. Mm -hmm. We don't care about how your feelings or what you, how you feel. All I want to do is get my point over. And if you don't agree, man, who act with you? I go back where I came from. But Jesus, when you you look here at him. Look here. Love, the only proper means of bridge fixing. Not only was the bridge broken between Peter and Christ, but all the other disciples also. Look here. So they had, verse 25, verse 15, so they had died, and Jesus said to Peter, uh, Simon, Thou lovest me more than these? He's trying to find out where 
his love is, where his affections are, where his loyalty lies. Right? If you love a person, you, you will do for the person those things that are essential for the relationship to maintain itself. Right? If you, if you love a person, you have to love a person in the right spirit, the love of Christ. Because loving another person, there's forgiveness and, and mercy and compassion all the time. If just loving a person is on your terms, nothing is going to occur of any benefit to you or to the person. That's true. On your terms. Mm. But Peter, uh, Jesus made it very clear to you. He said, if you love me, feed my lambs. See, it wasn't about what Peter had done to betray him. It's about his love. Now, could you serve? And you, you remember, Jesus never brought that up here. So many times we bring up stuff that people did. Huh? And that's, that's, that's all we got. Just bring up stuff people did. Mm -hmm. But it never happened here with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Is you love me more than these? Mm -hmm. Well, if you do feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking he said in a voice that was not anything of anger or frustration. It could have been something. You love me, Peter? You love me more than these? And, and why is he saying that all that stuff that Peter did was going through his mind. He had forgot how he betrayed him. He had forgot how he cursed and denied him. He had forgot that. But the love of Christ exalts all that. Suppose he'd got that, that pointed finger at Peter that chewed him out because of that. Would Peter been in his service to him at all? No. His ego is that everything about him was beat, beat to a puff. And Peter could not serve anybody because of the finger point that are greater than Peter made him feel like it was worse than a lamb, worse than anything. How can I serve you, Christ? And you down me and you just curse me out because I betrayed you. Jesus understand. Always. Those times that Christ said, oh, do you love me? Mm -hmm. Do you love me? Jesus. Love will fix up a bridge. Not only fix a bridge, it love don't do patching. Love fixes. Mm -hmm. Fixes. If you have that love of Christ in you, it will maintain its stability. Nothing can break it. All in the fussing, whining, death. Nothing can break that religion because it's a spiritual religion, not physical and not mental. That's why Paul said, let this mind be your way. That's in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Renewing of your mind. The transforming of your mind. Mm -hmm. Look what it says here. Verse 16, and he said to him again, Peter's all this stuff that Peter did, all those promises he made, not to abandon it, all that stuff is, is in his head, in his mind. Now he's going to ask me again? Huh? The second time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? Peter is searching deep within his in itself, what is going on here? Mm -hmm. What is happening here? Then it says, Son of Simon, thou lovest me. He said unto him, Yea, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto them, unto him, What well, feed my sheep? Mm -hmm. If you love me, don't worry about the past. That's under the blood. Don't worry about the past. I'll forgive you for that. Thank you. If you love me, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Focus 
on feeding my sheep. Yes, Not on the press. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Not on that which is dead and buried. I left it in the ground when I got up in the third day. Oh. With all power, man, I left it in the ground. Thank you, Lord. Why are you still carrying it? Why are you still holding on to it? Feed. You can't feed if you uh, bog down with something that's not a price. How can you feed sheep if you got all this other stuff in you? Can't feed nobody if you've been fed by guilt and shame and things of that nature, can you? No. This other one, he says, uh, and it said to him a third time, my Peter, he was a kind of a fellow that didn't actually want to deal with all this. You know, people are very boisterous. He spoke up times. He did things and cut people's ears off. And so he had a kind of disposition about him. If you ask me one time, I, I, I can deal with it. But two times, oh man. But here he come a third time. Do you love me? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> and by this time, you, Peter is, is wondering what this is all about. At the same time, God is renewing him. It's taking all that away because Christ didn't bring it up. Mm, all the guilt. Mm, mm. All the shame mm, mm. that he, he acquired during that time that Jesus was going to the cross at that time in, in Pilate's Hall. All that was dealt with because of Christ. Amen. Not because of anybody else. Thank you. Amen. Not because of some poem or some well-spoken preacher. It was done with because of Christ's Amen. love for Peter. Amen. Mm. Yes. Do you love me? Yes. Okay. You love me? Well, feed my sheep. Yes, the third time it says, Peter was grieved. Mm. Kind of bothered Peter a little bit there. I, the first couple of times, it wasn't, it was all right. But I think that third time, it really touched something. Mm. You know, so, so, you love me? Yeah, I love you. You are an idiot. Yeah. You love me? Uh, yeah. What? You love me? Ooh. I'm wondering why this third time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes a third time is the time that it breaks through the flesh the soul down to where Christ resides in the spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Is it there or not? Yes. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Well, feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. The long session here, they ate, they ate the fish, but also that we eat them, eat them Christ. He said, I'm the bread of life. Yeah. The word of life, that's who I am. Either me and you shall not be hungry anymore. Either me and you won't thirst anymore. Thank you, Lord. This is what love will do. It will fix bridges. Not only bridges between you and Christ, but between you and other fellow believers. Love is what ought to be in homes. Christ love, I ain't say your love. Your love will not survive there. Christ's love will persevere. In every situation, Christ's love will persevere. And if Christ is in you, in you, you can love. If you're not loving, if Christ is in you, you shut him down. You shut him down. He wants to love through you. Don't shut him down. Let him love through you. And at the end, the Bible says, when it's all over, Every man work shall be tried what by fire yes. to see what sort it is. If any uh, survive, shall receive a reward. Right? Mm -hmm. So the servant Christ, he not only said, "Yeah, you serve me because you love me," but I reward you when it's all over. Yes, you can't lose yes. Yes. if you're in Christ. Amen. That's the story for this morning, my brother and sister. It's how many promises we made, how many times we disappointed Christ and, and messed up in our lives. But the question is, do you love me? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Do you love me? Mm -hmm. If you love me, you feed my sheep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
he's talking to Peter as a, as a, uh, as a disciple, and, uh, but at the same time, each of us are in a position that we can feed also. We can feed what Christ has given us to another person. Forgiveness, right? And most of the time, that's what it's all about. People that hurt us over the years, that have done to us and broke us, and, but we need to forgive and allow Christ's life to live through us so that we can, we can enjoy him. He is a joy, unspeakable and what? And full of glory. That's it, it for this morning, man. The whole thing was about relationship and how it can be restored only in the person of Christ, the love of Christ can restore in a relationship. Amen. All right, any questions or any remarks? Are we open? Yes. I would like to say that this is a good lesson. Amen. And I was thinking about time shopping on. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. And that is part of this lesson. <laughs> you actually right. We had that Friday, Friday at, um, at um, James' house. Right. He couldn't come down, so we got sent us up there. And we did a study on Proverbs iron shoppeth iron and I think this morning was uh, kind of a lean that way iron shoppeth iron and Christ is not about destroying anybody because if he destroys you you can't serve him yeah. but the life the love of Christ and the life of Christ in us uh, we have no excuse for not loving one another and forgiving one another. have no excuse if Christ is in you got no excuse if you got an excuse, it's because of one you're fabricating in your own mind. It already been taken care of at the cross. Amen. Any any other comments? We good? Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Was that it? Was it that thorough objection? You think? <laughs> <laughs> I would say yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> I love you. I love all of you. And I've been wrestling with some things myself. I'm gonna tell you about my my wife and I. Well, the day we we'll go. We're going down to visit her sister. And so we pull up at McDonald's. Do you remember that? McDonald's there on uh, yeah. 95. <clears throat> and asked for, let me cut this off. And uh, 